These are profound words from our beloved Ascended Master Al Moira, the spiritual caravan. Beloved friends of light and love, I am the gentleman who is responsible for taking your individual little boats out of the shallows into the deep blue sea. It is perhaps wise and expedient that I remain, for a time, behind the human veil, for it is a measure of protection to my life stream as well as to your own. I would endeavour, in speaking thus with you, informally, to give you an understanding of what is the design behind this endeavour, why it was brought forth, and to what purpose we wish to sustain it. With understanding comes illumination and willing obedience. The life stream who obeys without understanding is but the serf and the slave, and serves no good purpose to the masters in this work, which is to become worldwide in its action in the days and years ahead. We are engaged, the other ascended masters and myself, in the building of a bridge, a bridge which will endure until every man and woman and child that belongs to this evolution has passed from the realm of imperfection and limitation over it into God's freedom. Into and under that bridge we are building a foundation made of strong and valiant, hand-picked, hand-chosen life streams who can bear the weight and strength of the energies of the masses when they begin to cross from the shadows into sunshine, from darkness into light, from limitation into freedom, from disease into health and perfection. Some of you have builded bridges through the ages. Some of you know how very important it is to have a strong foundation, lest the weight of the individuals who use it in the future might be more than it could carry. We are the engineers who are endeavouring to find out the strength of the various life streams whom we have called to the colours. Those who choose to remain with us shall have the great privilege and honour of becoming the living foundation of this bridge of living light. When first mankind came out of the heart of God, a bridge of light was sustained, made up of the wide sweep of each one's own silver cord, and every one was in full conscious communion with the God Self. Over that bridge walked the masters and the angels. Over that bridge walked the teachers, the gurus, the guides, and the guardians of the race. Mankind lived in exceeding peace, for they had the counsel of perfection upon which to build their individual endeavours. As the ages passed, that bridge, even like the beautiful marble bridge at Shambhala, disintegrated, as each individual life stream withdrew his attention and withdrew the separate span of his own life energy from the overall width and strength, until that bridge became thin as a spider's web, maintained and sustained by the very few saints and sages of every age, who, foregoing personal pleasure, chose through the attention to hold the connection with the God-beings, who, at the farther side of that bridge, vowed to sustain it, so long as one remained upon this planet who would send up the span from earth. Do you know that previous to the coming of Sanat Kamara, there were ages when only one life stream held that bridge? Only one life stream kept it from being severed eternally, and the entire evolution swept into the second death? When our great Lord Sanat Kamara came from Venus, his first activity was to magnetize, through his own heart's light, the sleeping souls of the guardians of the race, who had, unfortunately, joined the sleeping evolution for which they vowed to care. Through love he drew in their finer bodies while the physical garment slept. These souls, who once had stood before the throne of the Eternal and gave the pledge or vow to life to see this evolution free. To these guardians he spoke, as only he can speak, until their hearts were filled with love for the mankind of earth, and they re-entered their bodies on waking with a deep, determined desire to stimulate the God fire within the mankind of Earth and send up those energies to recreate the Bridge of Light. Why do you think Shambhala has been called, through the ages, City of the Bridge? Ah, true, there was a lovely carved marble span across which your feet and mine walked in happy innocence, 
but the bridge that Sanat Kamara builds is made up of the energies of the aspirations and hopes, the prayers and dedications and devotions of incarnate souls. Again and again through the ages, the great have come, and through the stimulus of their presence have raised a small number into their ascension. Then, for a time, the bridge was strong, and over it passed the fortunate few who availed themselves of the cosmic moment before the religion was stripped of its spiritual significance and became again a dogma of words. If it was not for those few within every age, not one would have achieved his own eternal victorious mastery and ascension. Now again we come, rallying to the banners of Saint Germain, to build a bridge over which every member of this race shall pass. Not only the billions who are presently enjoying themselves in the sleep of the senses incarnate, but also the billions who are awaiting the opportunity for re-embodiment. Some whose creation is so heavy that they would move the very earth from its axis were they to be admitted until places were made for them by the removal of another presently incarnate soul. For one year we have coaxed and pleaded with and loved you, but now we move forward with those who choose to come. Have you ever joined a caravan to cross the trackless wastes of the deserts? Yes, some among you have. I joined one once, following a star, hoping to find a Christ, and I was rewarded. I remember well the preparations of the leader of that caravan, who agreed to accept, on certain terms, pilgrims from various parts of the world, who chose to band their strengths together, and then, after the goal was reached, to go their separate ways. I remember how fierce this leader was. I remember thinking at the time how heartless, for I had not in my conscious mind a memory of the desert, the wasteland, and conditions of nature against which the puny form of the physical body would be required to stand. He was a rough man, and an uncouth one, and he spoke in rough terms. He asked us, each one, if we carried with us a knife, and someone asked why, and he said, It is better to die upon the knife than to die of thirst in the desert. If you should weaken, because we cannot stop, we must be on our way. Some among our number left the band. He examined well what we carried. He insisted that those who carry too many worldly goods unload their camels or their horses and place in their stead plain water. There was grumbling because in the exchange of costly goods was money and interest and reward. Some there were who hid worldly goods in their skins in place of water and they died upon the deserts. He asked us if we wore beneath the silken garments of the day protection against the heat of the desert sun, lest we be stricken as we moved relentlessly forward. Many other things were asked. He was relentless in that discipline. Those of us who abided with his counsel remained with that caravan to the end, and others' bones are bleaching yet beneath the desert sun. Now I seem to hear down through the ages the shout of the leader as he gave forth the signal to proceed. From group to group the call went forth. The sneering camels rose on their reluctant legs. The fiery horses champed at the bit. The lumbering elephants followed slowly, and the ho, ho, ho of the leader resounded through the heart and spirit. I stand in that place today, friends of my heart. We can tarry no longer in the personal self. We go forth to build a world in which perfection shall be the lot of every man. The spiritual sound of the fire of my heart inspires those of you who wish to ride with me in this service. To those who choose to remain, I say, you will cross on the bridge we build one day in safety, in a great deal more comfort and in a great deal more peace. I cannot force you to be among those who are the builders of the bridge, whose very bodies are sacrificed to the task, whose consciousness is open to the almost superhuman release from our octave. There is blood and sweat and tears in the service of those who choose to respond to the hoe of the spiritual caravan. To those who choose to wait, there will be a beautiful white span made up of the electronic light of those life streams who have lived and died in service. It will be soft to your feet. It will be safe, and the raging torrent beneath will have no danger for you. 
Someone who has gone before will have stood to his neck in that water and perhaps been wasted away in the raging flow of the tides. These latter are the men and women who are the builders of this age. Those of you who are ready have been given my individual and collective counsel and opportunity. Avail yourselves of it. If you choose, we march. Beloved ones, having delivered myself of my message, may I assure you I also have developed, which was an essential ingredient to my release, a sweeter side. I have spoken officially, and now I speak as a friend. I love you. I loved you enough to stand before the Mahachahan and implore him to give me the opportunity to contact a few of you and prove that there are incarnate life streams who can believe in intelligences who have no way and means of reaching the outer consciousness through the veil except through an instrument as he would allow. I pledged my life, a great store of my personal energies harnessed reluctantly, for I am a freeborn man, and I have written countless words harnessing the energies of my world to coax you to understand. Elmoira.